Hi, you guys. I am back for another Big Four pattern review. This time it is New Looks, New Collection. Um, this is their spring. I think it's, I think the ones I've been reviewing lately have all been spring collections. Um, and then we'll see from some of them in early summer and then summer from everyone, hopefully. But um, let's take a look. So New Look is the one that's at Joanne for $3.99 every single day. No coupons, none of that. They also sell them for $3.99 online here. Um, I don't know if these go online on sale. Oh, wait. I don't know if these go on sale online. Um, I don't think so, but during the times when they say all brands, does that include New Look? I'm not sure. So either way, the only difference most of the time is, is your shipping costs. So I love shopping the wall of New Look um, when I'm at... Joanne just because I know I'm gonna not pay a fortune and it doesn't matter what day of the week it is but um, Let's take a look at the new spring collection see what we think and I also am interested to see about sizing for new look because from what I could tell Even as recently as their last collection. It was still only misses. So this one is sizes 10 through 22 um, And I also want to say that they always put all of their sizes in one envelope so we'll have to see how that shakes out in terms of sizing. But all that to say, let's take a look at this new knit dress. Um, easy to sew pullover dress has front inset, elasticized waist, and narrow hem. Bodice options include loose fitting bias cut surplus or sleeveless with scoop neck. Designed for moderate stretch knits. So we have, I don't know what this inset is that they're speaking of, but it's a you know, mock wrap um, with a shoulder, gathered shoulder detail, and just a long grown on sleeve. Um, there's not an actual separate pattern piece here, just a long grown on sleeve into a pretty substantially wide elastic waistband. It's interesting to me that the waistband is not gathered, but it's gathered above it and below it. How are they doing that? The casing. Maybe you gather up this dress first, then apply the casing. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know. That's that's stumping me at the moment. But you have this long maxi length, and then you have a midi length, and then the sleeveless with the crew neck. So you're going to get two bodices with this pattern. That's a pretty good deal for four bucks. Um, and then like just a basic skirt that you can make whatever length you want. Here's a look through the illustrations. All right, here's the back. Okay, so the back does have gathers on the waistband. So maybe there's only elastic through the back and the fronts are just gathered above and below the casing. Here's the back of the envelope. They give you little to no information, but sizes 10 through 22, which translate into a... Gosh, none of it really matters. It's all very loose. And the waist is the fitted part, but that's just from the elastic. So I think you should just base it off of the finished bust measurement and then get your elastic to fit. But at least your bust, you won't be swimming in the in the bodice. They're not going to give us finished garment measurements for anything other than the length. So this looks to be the last of the big four that is adopting some of the rules that they have put in place for Simplicity, McCall's, and Vogue. All right, that's disappointing. That also doesn't give me very much hope that there's going to be women's sizing in this collection either. All right, so we have a bodysuit. Uh, long sleeve bodysuit has either a deep V-neck wrap front or a mock neck. Body suits are a staple. Okay. I don't need you to tell me that. All right. So that's how you're getting into this one. This one, oh, I can't see. There must be a zipper in the back. So here and brave choice to not put her in any pants with this. I mean, I guess how else are we supposed to show that it's a bodysuit? I don't know, but, um, kind of reading like swimwear to be honest. And also you're telling me this is not sewn down? There's no way. This has to be sewn down. You can see this is taking such a strong curve here. There's no way this fabric will be holding that by itself. So I want to see what other kind of 
shenanigans are going on. I will say that in terms of fit, they did a really good job making sure we've got some negative ease throughout so that it's nice and fitted. Oh good, she put on pants. How cute. There's, wait. Yeah. No, that's not a zipper. So that just must be some really stretchy fabric. What about the mock neck? There's no way you're getting in that mock neck without a zipper. Oh, the snaps. Duh. I'm not losing my brain very much right now. You guys are all probably screaming at your computers. My bad. So yeah, you put it on over your head. Duh. I don't know what I was thinking. But I'm pretty sure the wrap is also sewn down. Even more so now that I'm thinking of the snaps on the bottom. Okay. Duh. So we have extra small to extra large in this pattern. It translates to size 6 to 24. Um, that gives us a bust of... 30 and a half up to 46 and you can see here finished garment wise there's five inches of negative ease so and I know that sounds like a lot but I'm telling you guys if you want something super fitted this zero ease one inch of ease that's why I keep talking about on some of these other patterns where they look like fitted to the body like the fabric is stretching to get around the body a little bit and there's one inch of positive ease I'm like there's no way it's going to fit like that there's just no way um, you have to have negative ease and they're not talking anything about, um, percentage of stretch. They have this pick a knit rule, but I imagine this fabric they're requiring is going to be a hundred percent stretch. Um, and also possibly four way stretch. And if that's the case, if you find a fabric you love, but it's not as stretchy like a Jersey, you absolutely will have to size up to create less negative ease which seems like contradictory, but anyway, stretch knits such as Jersey spandex blends, stretch lame. Okay. Stretch velvet and then two way stretch for your crotch lining. You need a little, like the littlest amount of trico. And then there's elastic for the leg lines and also probably that front neck line. One and almost two yards of, of this one and seven eighths. I think that says, of three, three quarters. Oh, I can't read the numbers that are this small. Um, also for B one invisible zipper. Well, maybe I'm not losing my mind. There is an invisible zipper back here. Oh, okay. Okay. So you do need that to get in. I would have thought you'd been able to just pull this over your head. If it's stretchy enough, your fabric, I would try, I would make up the little mock neck and try and pull it on over my noggin. And if it goes over, I'd forget about the zipper. If it doesn't go over though, if your fabric isn't stretchy enough, then yeah, you will need that. Cause that's not even going to go over your head. Okay. Next we have a pleated skirt. Now these little like, you know, little school girl skirts with the pleats all around are definitely a trend. Um, the little tennis skirts, you know, all of that really, really making a strong statement in fashion right now. I think the way that they're doing it is so modern and updated. You can see she even has this little uh, like penny loafer, but it's like chunky on the bottom. You know what I mean? And like a monochromatic, like... They really are making them seem a lot less like a schoolgirl and more just like a really feminine, like cute look. Um, I kind of really love them. I've been trying them on at Goodwill, but haven't found one that fits yet. Um, so maybe I will be making my own. It can't be that hard. It just can't be. Well, it says easy to sew. <laughs> Short or midi length pleated skirt has a side zipper opening and optional ribbon detail. So I love a side zipper. I don't know about a midi length on this. That could get a little bit frumpy, but the shorter you go, the cuter it is. I'm just going to say, um, they have done theirs here in like either that's an actual twill or it's printed to look like twill. The ribbon trim is a nice detail. I've been seeing them just in like white twill. Um, so you can go super simple with this too. It doesn't have to be like a printed fabric at all. There's a little floral one. There's a longer one. And there's your little side zipper. I love that they did it in orange. 
Let's see the back. Are we going to get this tank top or this t-shirt? That's cute. Um, oops, I did that a bunch last time. I think the way the website works now is a little bit different than it used to be. And it's very sensitive to the scrolling. But yeah, it's cute, right? You guys have to admit that. I wonder how the hem is done. Is the hem in here somewhere? Let's see if it's noted on the line drawings. It is not. So, 6 to 16 on the size range. Yikes. That is a waist measurement of 23 to 30. Wow. Um, that's pretty limiting. They're not giving us finished garment measurements, but I imagine it's only like one or two inches larger than these. So, like 25 to 32 is what I would guess it is. Oh, that's really too bad. I mean, that's way too small for me. Um... I don't know how difficult it would be to, to uh, like, uh, grade it out or, like, you know, create a bigger size. It's probably starting off as something like a square, and then you put all your pleats in. I don't know. I don't even know if that's really worth it. Man. Okay. Um, suggested fabrics are cotton blends, gabardine, crepes, and sateen, and you need a little bit of interfacing. There's a zipper and the optional ribbon trim. 6 to 16? Come on. I guess maybe because it is such a trend among like Gen Z, they're thinking that it's like a younger trend. And I hate that. Okay, easy to sew, pull on tops feature, pleated bodice and square neckline with elastic gathers at shoulder. Short sleeves are either flutter or gathered with ruffles. So we're still, we're still doing this. Um, this big sleeve thing, the square neckline thing, all of that is still happening. Now, is this the same as these? Because this, oh, you know what they might have done? They might have like pinned this back to give her a little bit more shape and then you can see it in the pictures. No. Oh, how embarrassing if that's the case. Either way, there's no way seen. These are all just like, pleats that release into the peplum. I got to see the back of this. Cuz that does that looks like there's a waist seam. It looks like there's an obvious V there and in the line drawings they are straight A line. Here is this. Yeah, it's hard to tell what they've got going on. But they have given her a waist somehow, and I'm just not getting that from the line drawings at all. Um, like, the line drawings are definitely um, A-line, which is adorable. I don't need every single thing I have to be, like, a fit and flare. I don't need everything to have a defined waist. Sometimes it's just enough to have, like, a loose, flowy top and have a pretty, you know, neckline showing, and that's enough. For what it's worth, lengthening this into a dress would also be super adorable um, and really easy to do. Super easy to do. Um, the sizing on this is 8 to 18. That's going to take you to a bust of 31 and a half to 40. Finished, that's 36 to 44. So I will say there is four and a half ease, inches of ease in this bust, which is kind of a lot. I bet you anything that's why they're tucking her in this is not four and a half inches of ease it's just not I mean that's like maybe one um so I think they put it on her and it was just too big and they needed to you know not have it look like a potato sack so they did they pulled her in you can even see under here how some of that's happening um Dang. Okay. So yeah, I think, I think that that's what's happening. I stand corrected. They can prove me wrong, but you can even see through here how big this neckline is. Um, yeah, I think it's just, it's too, it's graded out too much. There's too much, um, design ease. So with that said though, that probably means you, if you are a size 20, or maybe even a 22, you could probably make this. The bus is the most important part. If you have a smaller bust, you can, you know, make up your own sizes out here because there is so much ease in that bust. 
If you're confused about how I'm getting there, you can download my fast fit worksheet on my website, inside the Um, and that's sort of how I think about sizing for all my projects. Um, all right. Fabric wise, they're, they're suggesting batik, chalet, cotton blends, crepe de chine, dotted Swiss, lightweight linens, and silky types. Yeah. So all of your wovens, lightweight to the lighter end of midweight. You need elastic for your sleeves if you're doing that option. Um, also for a, oh, elastic for the shoulder seam too, or the strap. I don't know what you call that, the top of the sleeve. Um, and then bias tape. I do think it could be really, really cute. I do love the design, but I think the sizing is going to be way off on this one. Okay, now we've got this Mrs. Top, similar to the one we just saw. Um, but instead of having those pin tucks or those pleated darts that are released, <laughs> it's just little pleats in the waist seam. Anyways, this is how they describe it. Easy to sew peplum top with front and back inverted pleats, have three quarter or short all in one sleeves and invisible zip back zipper closure. Okay. So as I was saying, you have, instead of uh, closed pleat, closed pleat, closed pleat that releases in the bottom here. You just have it literally like tacked down just this one little area. Um, and it is a peplum, a true peplum in that it has a waist seam. So you do have to pay attention to where this hits on your body. This looks a little long waisted. I think her natural waist is probably up here somewhere and here's where the seam is. So keep that in mind. Also, it is a grown on sleeve. So keep that in mind too. There's no sleeve seam here. So you are going to get some bunching. You got to pay attention to your fabric when you're doing that. If your fabric doesn't drape well and create like a pretty fold, it's going to look funky on your body also. That said, it can't be too drapey because then it won't hold these. It's a delicate balance, a fine line that we, um, that we walk when it comes to picking fabric for our projects. It is sweet. It's giving me um, like Banana Republic. Like I'd see you making it out of like a silk or like a crate back satin or something and having a really pretty like um, layering piece for like workwear. I don't know about it so much for like casual. That feels a little, I don't know. I don't know that I would like just wear it you know, as just like, a, I don't know, it's, uh, it feels uncomfortable to me and I can't explain why it should, it's not going to be uncomfortable, but it just feels like it would be something that I would be like tugging on a lot. I don't know. Just that's, that's the, my initial reaction. Um, but it doesn't even matter what I think because the sizing is size six to 16 and I cannot wear that. <laughs> I mean, a 30 inch waist, <laughs> that's just like, oh my gosh, even in the stores, like you look at jeans, a size 30 is equivalent to a six, right? Eight maybe. So you're meaning to tell me you're only making clothes up to a size eight in women's ready to wear. That's just wild. All right. So Shally, Charmeuse, Crepe de Chine, Double Georgette, Matt Jersey, Knit, and Silky Types. And then... Yeah, finished waist is 32 and a half inches. I will say two inches of ease is a lot in the waist. Not a lot, but a lot for this. No, it's not. I'm, what, am I ta what am I talking about? It's not. That's just, the, the sizing is just not acceptable. There's just no way around it. Like, you can't tell me that more of your target demographic has a waist of 25 inches versus 32 and up. There are people that have 25 inch waists and by all means they should have patterns that fit them too. But if you can only pick six sizes, which is a problem in and of itself, if you can only pick six, you're meaning to tell me you're going to include the one that has a, si a waist of 25 inches. I'm just saying, pick the median, pick the middle where the most people are. Most people are not a 25 inch waist. I don't know. That's just how I feel about that. I, I knew the sizing on new look was bad. I didn't know it was this bad. Yeah. All right. This is Mrs. Shorts and pants. Easy to sew loose fitting shorts 
and wide leg pants, have front waistband and pleats, elasticized back casing, side front pockets, and stitch seams. I already have patterns like this. This is nothing new in terms of design. Now that I'm thinking about it, the last two really are nothing new in terms of design either, those other tops. Um, it's maybe been a minute since I've seen them, but I definitely have pants that I've made that look just like this. Um, I will say the the leg on this is super, super wide. That might be a big difference in the ones that I have. It's not a hard change for me to make, but if you're not into making alterations, I can see how that would be overwhelming. But you do have a little curved pocket, some pleats, as they said, a nice big waistband. Um, the waistband looks curved on her and flat on the line drawings. That's concerning to me. I'm interested to see what these look like in the back for her. But, um, nice, big, wide leg. Oh, they're not even going to give us a picture of the back of her? Well, there you have it. That explains it all. I don't need to know anything more than that. If you're not showing me a picture, there's a reason, right? Especially when all the other patterns we've looked at have had a photo. Gosh, I know that I'm sounding so, like, critical and nitpicky right now, but I think I'm just like, it's 2023. Like I'm over these problems. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe tonight we we'll back to film this, but you're getting a true reaction. That's for sure. All right. Size 10 through 22. So it's two size. They removed two sizes from the smaller end and added three to the upper end. That just makes so much more sense to me. It just does. Okay, so the waist is a size 25 up to 37. Finished, they're not going to give us the finished waist. But you got to imagine, well, it has the elastic in it. Maybe that's not, maybe that's why, because it's so loose fitting everywhere. And then you have the elastic in the, in the back. I would still check the front part of the waistband maybe and make sure that that wraps around you comfortably and then leave the back. But the fact that that, because it has to be straight in the back, the waistband has to be straight in the back because of the elastic. The fact that that front is curving so much, that makes me feel like something's wrong with the rise maybe. I don't know, something's not right there. That should have been straight across her body. You're not gonna have a curved front waistband and then a straight back one. So that, mm, I'm leery. That would, that would, that's a strong orange flag. Like not quite red. I think we could fix it, but it's, if you don't know what you're doing, like if you, yeah, that, that's going to be a problem. Fabric requirements are lightweight to medium weight woven fabrics such as gauze, chalet, crepes, and crepe de chine. Now I will on a positive note, say I love it when they do this lightweight to medium weight woven fabrics. And then they give a few suggestions. I don't know why we're not doing this. And this goes for McCall, Simplicity, everybody. I wish they all did this little bit here, such as these three or four. That way you could look up those three or four, see if you like them. Maybe you don't. And if you don't, then you know that this category is much more broad and you can find something else that's not one of these in this. Um, and it's just, this is so limiting um, to someone who doesn't know a lot about fabric. So I like when they do that. I wish they did, I wish across the board they did that more often. And I'm happy to see it here. Just wish I saw it more. Okay. Next we have this top and skirt. This easy to sew sleeveless knit top with bias tape finish pairs perfectly with the midi length skirt that has side front pockets, side invisible zipper, and front slit. Are they both knit? So the most basic knit tank top you can think of. Um, this is borderline. This looks really good here in terms of shoulder length. This one, ah, that does too, but maybe it because it's not cut in at all, that's what it is. And that's okay. That's a design choice. Um, you just have to, you know, really look and make sure that it's not too big at the shoulder. This is a design choice. 
that's fine. If you want it to be a little bit more feminine, you can always cut this in a little bit more. And then it hits the high hip. And then you have this midi skirt with a little front slit. I think the skirt's gotta be woven. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a zipper. Oh, that's not true. There would be. Oh, there it is tucked in. Oh, good. So we can see the waistband. Thank you for doing that. So you have a pretty decent, like one, maybe one and a quarter inch waistband. You have the pockets that look to be squared off, but on the inside. And I don't think they're top stitched either. And then your side zipper. And the back with it. So they are doing a lot of things right here. Just not necessarily the things that matter most. Like the priority list is a little bit out of order. Um, but I talk to you guys about this a lot when it comes to waistbanded things. And that is this little guy right here. You guys all see that bubble right there, right? That just means that there, and you can see there's a drag line here and here and here. And all of that is pointing to where? Her bum. So what's happening is there's not enough width. There's not enough. It's, it's technically too small through here, but this way. Um, she needs more fabric to go up and over her butt. Um, if it were a width wise problem, these would be a lot more horizontal because they're all pointing downward. She needs a full seat adjustment, which is just where you slice through right here and add a little wedge. And that wedge is going to cause all of this to even out. And then you won't have this and you won't have any of these, none of those, just a little bit more room for like, it's the difference between a bubble butt and like just wide hips. So if you carry most of your, if your hip measurement, the circumference of your hip is mostly in your bubble butt, like it sticks out front to back more than side to side, that adjustment is going to help you get a really good fit. Okay. 10 to 22 again. That looks to be pretty standard for anything that has a bottom, I'm guessing. Um, so we have the hip for the skirt. Hip for the skirt has, yeah, two and a half, three inches. That makes sense for a fitted skirt. They're not giving us waistband measurements, which is a little frustrating, but um, the bust for the top has one inch of positive ease. That makes sense for a top like that. And you can tell the difference, right, between how this top fits versus how that bodysuit fit, right? And why the bodysuit would have so much negative ease, whereas this one is not super, like, like tight to her body. Okay. Fabric-wise, they are recommending Interlock Jersey ITY Bamboo Modal. And then for the skirt, you get chambray, cotton blends, linen blends, PK, sateen, seersucker, stretch wovens, double knit, and ponte. Yeah, couldn't agree more with all of those options. Lightweight fusible, a package of bias state for the arm size, and your invisible zipper for the skirt. Okay, next we have this dress. V-neck dress has flared skirt, sleeveless or three-quarter length sleeves, and optional self-belt. Dresses have back invisible zipper and back waist darts. V-neck dress, flared skirt. So this is just like a fit and flare. Okay, again, it's very long-waisted. This Last time it was like an inch or two. This time we're talking like three or four inches too long. Um, and it could be an issue with how she's got her hip pops, but we do have a bit of a neckline issue here that I do think the arm side looks really beautiful how it's cut in it might be too big it might be too big it's like I would be when we get to the ease I'm gonna be guessing that there are four inches or more in this bodice um, and then it's like a maybe half circle skirt that they have attached and then you can make this little belt to match this is very much what was for sale in patterns when I started sewing, like back in 2010. Um, interesting that it's coming back like this. I mean, I had a gajillion patterns just like this one. I loved this little princess seam detail. So flattering. And a circle skirt, you cannot go wrong with the circle skirt. Okay, here's the back. Again, too big. You can see it pulling away from her body here and also even creating this bubble, which is just like 
And look how wide it is here. Like this is like two sizes too big for her. And you can also really see through here how long the waist is. Like her waist, maybe it's here three inches, but this could all be raised like a lot. And then of course it would make it shorter too. But pretty simple classic design. These types of dresses are just, they go back decades and decades and decades. Women have been wearing them for the longest time and everybody looks fabulous in them. All right, size 8 to 18. That gives us a bust of 31 and a half to 40. Finished is 34 and a half. So there's three inches of ease. I bet there's three inches of ease and that dress is a size too big for that model. So just, just double check, get the fast fit worksheet, maybe size, you know, reduce the ease in the bust to two inches. Um, and then double check the waist, you know, should only have about two inches of ease too. And then the skirt is negligible because it's just so full. Um, they do have like suggested ease charts. If you guys have my ultimate sewing garment guide of guides, it's like a free guide on my, also on my website. Um, in there is a like suggested ease chart based on the fit, like fitted, loose fitting, semi fitted, and also like the part of the body that you're trying to fit. So that can help you kind of figure out how much ease should be in a particular garment at a particular place on your body. Okay, this one's sweet. Again, we've kind of been here, done this, right? We've seen a lot of these like um, almost like corseted, belted types of designs for a few seasons now. Um, this is an easy to sew button front dress with short or long sleeves, fitted bodice with front midriff, back yoke, and gathered skirt with side seam pockets. So... I do love a beautiful under bust seam. I mean, when it's gathered, it's just so sweet, so feminine. Deep V here. Deep V. I mean, it is going a little bit past her bust apex even. Um, some gathers up here. The sleeve's a little wide. Like, the length here is a little bit long. You know, I'd take it back to about here. Um, I'm getting the... the the I'm getting the impression, though, that for the most part, these aren't pattern design issues. These are size issues. I think all of these dresses are too big for this model. This one's way more forgiving than some of the other ones, but I think you can see it in places like this. Um, and then if they are like nipping and tucking her in the back with pins or whatever, like we could see in that last, the other photo, then they're just lying to us. That's how I feel. I feel like I'm being lied to when they don't show me the exact fit that they got using the exact fit models sizing or however they do it. Anyways, here's your little yoke and then some more gathers into the skirt. A ton of buttons going down the front. Um, and then you do have a sweet little um, kind of lantern sleeve with a band here. The size, I don't know if I like a 7 eighths inch length on a sleeve. It just feels like somebody made a mistake. That's just me personally. I'd rather see it all the way down to the wrist or half. I don't even know if I like three quarter sleeves with a band, to be honest. But that's just me. Yeah, it's a great dress. You could do absolutely anything in this dress. You could go to church, go to work, you know, go out with your girlfriends, go on a date. Depending on your fabric and all of that, you could, I mean, this dress will take you everywhere. So there's the back, really nice back. I don't see any too many problems lengthwise. I mean, again, maybe, maybe with the waist, but even that's not too, too bad. I love the little gathers here. The sleeve, again, you can see how her, her shoulder is, or even better here, actually. You can see this is where her shoulder, her arm is actually attached to her shoulder right here. Um, so this is where the sleeve seam should be and then it kind of that little bubble that's right there is supposed to go bubbling over her sleeve cap over her shoulder cap not it should start way up here and go up and over she shouldn't have this bubble at all in other words 
So, okay, so six to sixteen again. Um, finished bust is thirty four. So again, another. Well, this one. Wow, that this one has three and a half inches of ease. Again, probably what is explaining the shoulder fit. Um, and it's hard to tell how, I mean, it's hard to tell if this fit on the, I mean, I don't see how else you get those gathers there unless someone's pulled it up in the back and has it pinned. This also does not look like three and a half inches of ease to me. So just, I guess just know that like three and a half inches is not technically a fitted garment it's closer to loose fitting um and that when you have a dress that's supposed to be fit and flare even if it has a little bit of blousing to it you still shouldn't be going much more than two and a half or three inches of ease and i know a half inch doesn't sound like much but i mean it can make the difference between looking super frumpy and like you're drowning in your clothes versus not. I mean, I would err on the side of a, for the dress that's this design for a two inch bust ease for sure. And then they give us the hip measurement, which is like, why? Like we don't need the hip measurement on this. We know it's a full skirt. Give us the waist. Man, you guys comment a lot about how they should hire you. You should, so if ever, there's been a time or a need for that. I feel like it's now. So new look, call me up. My phone lines are open. <laughs> Let's figure this out together. My goodness. I don't know. Is Mimi just like, like <laughs> new looks on their own for now? She's done so much, so much good positive progress for the other collections. And it's almost like now that those have caught up, this is even more strikingly not good you know what I'm saying they you can tell just how behind the times they are before it was kind of like well you know how big four is they're kind of all like this but now that the other ones aren't and this is the only one that is it's like man man you guys are missing out all right this is a wrap dress with length and sleeve variations features romantic ruffles and long sleeves or sleeveless options um, so wrap dress, and I'm assuming this is a true wrap dress. Um, it ha it does not have gathers here, but there is something happening. There is a little bit of a pucker here. It's pointing to the bust. It looks like maybe it's pointing actually to the shoulder and there's too much fabric here. I don't know. Hard to tell because just how she's standing. Let me take a look at some more pictures. You can also tell that it's too long through here because when you do a wrap, right, and you're tying it around your waist, like there is a string around your waist on the inside, like, and you're pulling it kind of tight, like there's, if, the, if there's, if, if it's too long and there's too much fabric there, it is going to bunch up. Um, it's kind of the least forgiving in terms of length um, fit issues. But it's pretty, this reminds me a lot of the orange dress that I just did for the sew along. Um, that one is a true wrap, but we do a button. There's a button on the inside and here. And it still had this, it was a little bit shorter, right? It feels like almost the exact same design. Just a tie instead in lighter weight fabric instead of a button. Okay, here's another pose. Again, she's popping her hip a little bit, so it's a little bit hard to tell. But yeah, you can definitely see that her waist is closer to around here. And we still have this happening. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's got to be in the, if like the shoulder, because this does look okay, right, where the sleeve is hitting. But if that's close fitting and it's fitting like really tightly to her bicep and her shoulder cap, and then this is too long and like riding up on her neck, that would create that little bunch there rather than, but it, mm, yeah, I don't know. That one's not as common to me, this one here. 
it's not pointing to the arm side, it's pointing to the shoulder. So it's got to be something in the shoulder length. Same thing's happening here. Oh, here's the another dress and another, oh, same dress and a different girl. Okay. I wish I could see her from the front because then I would be able to compare the two girls. But I can't. But there is still, I guess, this happening. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so sizes 10 to 22. And we have three inches of ease in the bust. Because it's a wrap, it's a little bit more forgiving because you, know, you can just pull it tighter. Um, so three inches is probably fine for a wrap. It's, it's borderline though. It's definitely like, eh, maybe two and a half would be better, but I'm not going to go through that much work just to take out two and a half or just take out half an inch. Although that really only translates to a quarter of an inch more seam allowance on the side seams, which is easy enough to do, but you have to remember. So I don't know. Okay, Shally, Charmeuse, Cotton Lawn, Crepe, Crepe de Chine, Double Georgette, Gingham, Silky Types, and Wall. So yeah, all of your lightweight wovens for sure. Uh, cotton blends, lining fabrics, and interfacing. And then elastic for the sleeve. And they don't say anything about twill tape for that um, bias neckline. They do say lightweight fusible interfacing, but only seven eighths of a yard. Well, that is actually quite a lot. So maybe that's what they're having you do. Um, oh, and a lining. So the bodice is also lined and seven eighths of a yard of interfacing. So maybe they're yeah contending with the stretch factor of the neckline with interfacing instead of a tape of some kind. Maybe that's what's causing that bubble, the lining. Maybe somehow when the lining was attached to this, it didn't go together right. That could be it. Okay, look at this. Top and pants. This is going to be the best seller of their entire collection. Unfortunately, it's in sizes 0 to 4. No, I'm just kidding. It is in sizes extra small to extra large. <laughs> Oh gosh. All right. So easy to sew off the shoulder cropped top has elasticized neckline and waist with long gathered sleeves, loose fitting pull on pants have elasticized waist and side seam pockets. I could probably do without the pockets on this pattern, but nonetheless, I've been coming super picky about which of my garments I used to put pockets in everything. Like the pockets make everything better. Nowadays they get on my nerves sometimes and I just rather not have them. I mean, I have a purse almost all the time. All right, so you have this off the shoulder top uh, with elastic elasticized opening, elastic at the under bust, and elastic at the wrist as well. What makes this so cute and flattering is this big wide sleeve. Um, I just love that so much. What I want to know though is, does this stay down off of your shoulders? There's nothing I hate more than tugging on that all day long to keep those down. Um, not to say that you couldn't just wear it on top of your shoulder too. That's also fine. But I think that there is a sneaky way for you to put something in this underarm seam to prevent that from happening. I, or I don't know, maybe it's, there's some way some people's designs are able to keep them down. Like in some ways, they just pop up every single time. Maybe it's like the strength of the elastic. I don't know. Like the quality of the elastic, I'm not sure. But something. And then you have these basically pajama pants. Um, pull on elastic waist pajama pants. Sort of a, a wider leg at the bottom. It's a good balance, you know, the, with the whole look together. Um, super cute. You could lengthen this right? To make it come down to your true waist if you're not a midriff girly. But I think this is really cute for like a beach or pool or the Caribbean vacation or a cruise or like 
wherever you're going, I think this would be really adorable. I, the sleeve is really, really amazing. If the fact that she has her hands in her pockets right here and is not having any issues is a good sign. There's a, there's a plenty of ease in the pants and even this crotch curve looks amazing. Yeah, these are some well-fitting pants on her. Can't say they'd be the same for everybody out of the envelope, but on her, they look really, really good. That's what we should all strive for. All right, so extra small to extra large. That's equivalent to their whole range, so 6 to 24. Um, that gives us, so your bust obviously is super loose fitting. You're really fitting the top based on all these elastics that are happening. So, um, there's a lot of wiggle room there. The hip of the pant is the most important thing, which is that is the finished garment measurement that they gave us. Thank you very much. And it looks like there are roughly five or six inches of ease. That's perfect. This is the best pattern, hands down, through and through, fit, fabrication, all of it that I've seen so far. They should have led with this one. Um, and I hope people give this collection enough time or they give it enough, like they look through enough of the patterns to get to this one to see the diamond in the rough, <laughs> the, the diamond amongst the rough. <laughs> um, now I will say finished hip wise only goes up to 52. Um, and considering it's supposed to be a loose fitting pant that is still, you know, only 48 inches or so of hip circumference um, not nearly enough um, but it's the best that they've got and I guess under those circumstances that's we just have to be okay with that um, if you're giving me your entire size range fine if you're giving me like three sizes out of your size range, I'm going to have a problem with that, especially when it's already so limiting. All right. So gauze, crepe, chalet, and stable knits. Yeah. I think you can get away with some heavier weights too, like, um, like chambray, some cotton, cotton blends, you know, I think even like a, like a rayon twill, rayon blend wears linen. Like this would be great for linen. Um, so I think there's a lot more options here than just this. Okay. A bunch of elastic and that's it. <laughs> a ton of elastic. Okay. Now let's see. Was that, what's next? All right. Now we have this unisex outfit and then that's going to be it or unisex top, I guess. Mrs. and men's sweatshirts. Yeah, it's just a sweatshirt and a hoodie. Okay, easy to sew sweatshirt with or without hood. Top with hood has contrast lining, drawstrings, and side seam pockets. Fit based on men's sizing. So it's a men's sweatshirt <laughs> that women can wear. Oh, gosh. So she has on the sweatshirt. Wow. That is, that is like up on her neck. I would be tugging on that a whole bunch. Uh, I gotta imagine they have the same neckline. That's really weird. Maybe it's just being pulled down in the back. Also, why is it so long? Huh? Oh, cause it's a men's duh. Okay. And then his, I don't, I don't love hoodies with a hood lining. How do you guys feel about that? Um, and then your little drawstring. The fit looks okay on him. On her, let me see. There's more pictures of her. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. That it's like a tunic, a sweatshirt tunic. So pay attention to the link for sure. This is still bothering me. Why it's so up high? I doesn't need to be much lower, but like half an inch or something maybe. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. That part of the 1980s is not coming back. Mom jeans plus this long sweatshirt covering your butt. No.
They could have done like a cut here for women's, cut here for men's line on the pattern pieces. Small to 2X. So they gave us one bigger size for the guys. Nope, didn't mean to rhyme. They took away the extra small and included a 2X. So that's going to give you a chest of up to 52. <laughs> um, finished, it's 40, uh, 58 inches, so that's 6 inches of ease for a sweatshirt. Okay, I mean, you can have closer fitting sweatshirts for sure if that's your preference. Um, but I think, well, this is probably borderline oversized sweatshirt. So I would find the middle ground, maybe 4 inches for a standard fitting sweatshirt. So, so yeah, wow. Okay, I know I had a lot of, like, gripes with the whole thing for the most part, but um, on the whole, I think that the designs are cute enough, right? Um, it's just too bad most people aren't going to be able to sew them because they aren't going to fit anyone. Um, yeah. There is some cute stuff in here. On the surface, it all looks really good. When you get down to the nitty-gritty of it, though, there's fit issues. There's um, certainly sizing issues. So, But if I'm getting any of them, if I'm at Joanne and I remember, I'm going to be grabbing this one for sure. I have nothing like that in my stash. And I think it would be a really fun scrap buster with this little top. Although the sleeves probably make it not a scrap buster anymore. But you know what I mean. The rest of them... I would be buying this skirt if it fit this one, um, but it doesn't. So anyways, I, I, this one too, this one too. I would probably grab that one um, and make it into a dress. But anyways, I'd like to hear what you guys think. Um, you don't have to, you know, double down and join me on all the griping that, <laughs> that I made. I think we can all universally agree that there's a problem there. Um, but let me know what you guys think about the designs. And if you'll be grabbing any of the patterns. But that's going to do it for me today, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you all very soon. Bye!